So today I'm very excited to introduce uh, this topic, how to make a, a research agile. So yeah, let me uh, start off uh, some uh, introduction first. So I'm a design uh, manager at Via of the product team. And I have a 10 years experience uh, in user experience and user research related role. And I enjoy finding the problem and also discovering the insights and settling uh, the motion towards the uh, transformation that help our users. So yeah, this is uh, about my uh, background. And also I mentioned a bit about Vyang. So I also quickly uh, give uh, some introduction about Vyang. So Vyang is uh, uh, an online platform which can allow the user who can build an animation just uh, by dragging and drop uh, the asset to the stage and customize the uh, uh, look and feel just uh, with a few uh, clicks. So yeah, later I'm gonna introduce a bit more about the uh, products later. So yeah, this is uh, my uh, introduction. So I think, yeah, for today's uh, topic, I think many of you should already know uh, what is a uh, 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 agile. But just in case, let me uh, allow me to quickly explain what is uh, agile. So agile is an uh, iterative approach to software development. So that helps the team to deliver value to their customer faster with a fewer headache. So instead of the uh, betting everything on the big band's launch, an agile team deliver work in the small uh, agreement requirement and plans. And results are evaluated continuously. So the team having a natural uh, mechanism for responding to changing quickly. And why we have to consider agile when running a research? So most of the time, there's not enough research uh, resources. So I think many of you should already know. So in this case, that we have a uh, uh, plan resource carefully to make sure that all project can work on the uh, right uh, user problem. So by adopting uh, this uh, agile approach on user research, I see that they have a uh, three uh, advantage. So the first ad, uh, advantage is we don't stuck at the only one, uh, on the one point. Instead, we are feeding the insight to the next loop. And second is that we can also align with the other team by running the spring uh, together. So we are not really uh, isolated. And third is that, uh, we also can build a user-friendly uh, or user-oriented culture in our team by continuously feeding the insight to our organization. So this is the three main reason I feel that uh, having a job when running the research is uh, very important. So for today's agenda, I will be sharing four topics about how to, sorry. Yeah, so for today's agenda, I will be sharing four topics about how to run user research in an uh, agile way. So the first, starting uh, from the beginning of uh, uh, planning the project and until the last about how to share the insights. So the first topic, how to keep an uh, iterating research approach and keep the research solution flexible. So this is the first one. And second topic, I'm gonna discuss, uh, talk about how to plan the res uh, how to uh, plan research resources and also empower uh, research uh, ability to other team members so that we can utilize our research resource better. And number three, uh, creative. So in this part that I'm gonna talk about how, uh, how to be creative when we experience the uh, research resource limitation. And the last but not the least, storytelling. So how to story tell your user uh, insights and make the bigger impact to your organization. So let's find the first topic, iterate. So yeah, uh, for the first one, uh, test and iterate uh, research. So during the research, it's also very simple. Uh, sometimes I feel like it's very similar when you're broad, uh, building a product. So instead of just uh, spending lots of time to prepare a perfect research plan, so in our team, we prefer to launch the research when it's 80% done. We prepare the high level question and then learning through the uh, research process. Sometimes in the middle of the research, we found our interview question were not specific enough, or instruction were not clear, or even we realized some of the research methods were not suitable for their projects. So in this case, that we iterate the research and keep moving forward. So some people you might uh, doubt, can we really test a uh, 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 research on our user? So let me quickly explain how our team works. So uh, 
we usually uh, test an interview question or a flow or do the testing on our internal uh, user first, if it's uh, possible. So the internal user, including our internal employee who use our tool every day, or our regional reseller, or even our royal or power users. They are very kind and willing to share their thoughts and not only on the product itself, but also they are willing to share the feedbacks to our research uh, uh, question or interview flow. So yeah, after a, a, a few interviews of the beta uh, launch, then uh, the research team, we will try to regroup again and review about our current research, uh, uh, including the question and flow and testing plan, and even uh, the uh, uh, research methodology, is that has anything need to be uh, uh, modified. And then if uh, everything's okay, then we will do the official launch to yeah, start to recruit our target user and run the uh, testing. So by uh, doing this approach, they can uh, we can make sure that uh, yeah we keep uh, uh, getting more insights and then uh, try to uh, update our research uh, approach. Yeah. So there are a few things that we can try to pay more attention during the initial interview or research. So including that uh, whether the beginning instruction is clear enough for our user to know. And then uh, within the time uh, uh, limitation, whether the number of the question and test is uh, enough for them to answer or maybe too much overwhelming. And during the testing, whether the uh, question or test is too difficult or too simple and whether the question and test is clear uh, enough for that. Um, yeah, sometimes the question may not be really clear and then we don't really want to define as a, a, a too much leading question. So in this case, how can we better refresh the questions? And then uh, during the flow, whether the flow is a smooth enough and then whether the testing that's uh, or the flow that's uh, aligned with their uh, current scenario. So in this case, yeah, so we don't really stuck at the one point so we keep feeding the inside to the next loop. And second tips I would like to share is uh, uh, about avoid working on the too broad question at the very beginning. So yeah, we try to break the big question into the smaller question. So yeah, by doing that, yeah, big questions uh, break into the, uh, a few different uh, smaller question. Uh, we can see there has a, a few different uh, advantage. So the good uh, advantage by uh, 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 breaking the question, the first is about prioritize. So uh, uh, by uh, breaking that, we have to focus on most important topic and prioritize the resource on the most urgent topic. So we cannot work all the project at once. And second is after breaking that we can share the project with the other team member to work together. So without holding the project by your own. So we have a more uh, a resource to work together. And third, uh, frequent. So uh, yeah, uh, by uh, doing that, having a more smaller question, so we can have more constantly sharing. So other team, they can uh, work on a solution space in parallel. So they also get the feedbacks all the time. So I am going to share one of the examples that we worked recently about a uh, marketeer. So uh, yeah, so we would like to know that how can a uh, marketeer this uh, a drop floor? How can they create a video? And how can uh, VR help them to achieve their, uh, uh, their drop role? So in this case, the big question is how can uh, VR help the marketeer? So breaking this a big question. So we having a, a few different smaller question is that we understand about, yeah, one research is about understand about the tool usage. Why do they choose that uh, specific tool? And another sec, uh, smaller question is, uh, yeah, we would like to know about their uh, background, including the working schedule and then what is the environment like? So uh, where, uh, where they work and then uh, how about their, uh, uh, yeah, for example, like uh, the internet connection, everything about that, and then uh, device usage. And then the uh, third smaller question is uh, whether do they have any communication uh, issue uh, with their audience? And then the last is, uh, yeah, uh, how can we determine their marketer purchase uh, decision? What do they care before, uh, yet, uh, before they are uh, making the actual uh, purchase decision? 
So yeah, this is a one example. So by breaking those uh, uh, a uh, smaller, a uh, big question into the smaller question, so we can uh, focus on the uh, more important topic, and we delegate the project to the different team member. And third is about we continuously sharing the insights, and also for other people can, yeah, to uh, get the feedback all the time. And number three, I uh, the third tip uh, to make a user research to be more agile is to uh, try to review all the topic again before starting the projects. So yeah, in this case, uh, if you have a, a, a few different topic, so I will suggest that you can try to uh, categorize and or divide into the two different uh, groups. One is a known issue, the other one is unknown issue. So in this case, that's, uh, we don't really need to uh, run a full research from the very beginning. We can shift our focus on the different uh, approach. For example, for the non-issue, we can run the design uh, validation, A-B testing, or, this, uh, or preference testing to understand that uh, which solution and to, uh, is better to, uh, uh, to resolve the, this unknown issue. However, for the unknown issues, that we can work uh, for the more like a, a exploratory uh, research to uh, spending more time to understand about their uh, user mental model. Okay, yeah, so the first one is about the iterates and moving to the second part is the uh, empowered. So uh, uh, I think in our team, we don't really have uh, many researchers. So uh, uh, by this uh, uh, situation, we wish that uh, we can empower our research skill to other team member. So other team member, including uh, like for example, designer, project manager, so that uh, if they have any urgent task, so that they can work uh, individually by themselves. So how to achieve that? So I think for uh, uh, talking about empower research ability to the team member, I think the first important thing is that we have to raise their curiosity and familiarity first. So that we need to make sure that uh, we, uh, there has an easy way to receive the feedbacks. So as you can see, there are two uh, examples. So we have our own VM community. So in this community, our power user, they share about the thoughts and then uh, uh, any pain point they experience. And sometimes we even do some discussion with our uh, the user on the VM community. And for the right-hand side, uh, right-hand side is uh, our uh, release notes. So every release that uh, we will write an article or a video to introduce that a new feature, but we will also make sure that to including one minute of it to collect their feedbacks. So uh, after collecting lots of feedbacks, the feedbacks will share among the team so that uh, we can build the empathy to our user problem among the entire team. So the first is uh, yeah, familiarity with our user first. And second is uh, yeah, uh, to give them the uh, research power. So we built our internal research playbook. So we practice a few research methods by ourselves first and try to internal, uh, internalize the research method to fit our company uh, product development workflow. So at, as a left hand side, you can see that uh, we try to introduce a few different guidelines. Uh, if you would like to select the suitable uh, research methodology, I consider your time, resources, and then uh, whether qualitative or quantitative. Yes, yeah, so we give them the guideline about how to choose the suitable uh, research method. And for the right hand side, that's uh yeah, we also try to uh clarify the job uh uh job and responsibility of the team. For example, like uh, if you uh, work on the research, who are the contact point you can try to find, and then including some of the to do list, so which can help our team member. They are not afraid to do the research by themselves, so they can just uh, quickly uh, uh follow the guideline and workflow, which is uh, are all listed on our research workbook. And then for the third, it's also very important that to keep the uh, our uh, research uh, uh, quality. So we don't really just uh, try to uh, prepare the uh, playbook and then we also try to prepare a variety of the templates. So in this case, then we also, uh, yeah, the first we prepare is a, a research plan. 
So in the research plan that we ask uh, our uh, the people who want to conduct the research to consider who are your user and then what is the known and unknown issue and also about the, which research method you want to choose and what is your action plan. And also we have, uh, yeah, if you want to do some user testing and then how to better to list out all the tests which you want your user to complete. And then if you want to do some user interview and then here are the uh, template you can consider to use is the interview question guide. We tell you what is good, what is not good question so that you can just uh, use uh, this template to uh, maintain the quality. So yeah, so we try to safeguard the research quality by presenting variety of the templates. And another good advantage of the uh, this uh, template, not only about uh, a safeguard for the uh, quality, but also we can change people their behavior. For example, in the past, uh, every time when we do the uh, insight sharing, and then some of the uh, team member, they propose the design solution too quickly without considering what is the core value and what can be, uh, what can we, sh uh, what can we uh, deliver to our user. So those type of the critical or important information always be missed in the past research. So to solve this uh, problem, so yeah, we use uh, this uh, template as a, a reminder. So yeah, as you can see in this uh, reminder that we as a user, before considering about the solution, before considering about how might we, we have to consider how can we turn in the insights to use a goal and then what is the value that uh, our product can bring to them and consider for the solution as a, a, a later step. So by doing that, uh, yeah, uh, I feel like a template is a great tool that's to make sure that uh, some of the uh, key information cannot be missed during the presentation. And the fourth uh, technique is that we also are uh, having a workshop uh, often. So once we have uh, any new uh, workflow, as I just uh, uh, introduced earlier, or if we find any good practice uh, from our designer, we share with the team and then learn together. So we uh, explain it as, a, uh, as an open door. So in the workshop, everyone working together as a knowledge sharing. So yeah, this is a good way for all the people gathering the knowledge and learning together. And number five, uh, this is a, a, another good technique I would like to share with everyone. Is uh, uh, for our team, we also try to provide more customized service based on team member their request. Because uh, some team member, maybe they are new, but some team member that has already run a few different research before. So in this case, they, they don't really need the full support but they may need uh, a bit additional support. So in this case that we break down the research flow and then solution into the smaller uh, task or steps. So as you can see that we try to list out before the research, plenty of research, during the research and after the research. And then uh, by each step, we estimate the working date of the yeah each steps. And then so other team member, if they need support, they can just uh, select the, uh, service uh, what they need only. So by doing that, so we uh, we can help the team collaborate better and also provides a more flexible research service when planning the project. And then the number six, the last, how to empower our user. Definitely we need to grow their research method. So uh, for our, uh, uh, the researcher in our team, the role is more like uh, yeah, as a consultant or try to handle more difficult research. And also at the same time, they are the people who are uh, sharing the knowledge. So we also continuously share the uh, research knowledge to the team based on the current project type. So sometimes that we have a more usability issue need to fix. Sometimes we have uh, some information architecture issue need to fix. So we will try to present the knowledge based on uh, our current project needs. Okay, then moving to the uh, third topic, uh, be creative. So yeah, I think be creative is a very interesting topic. Sometimes that's, uh, yeah, be creative is not only uh, apply for the designer, but also we need to be creative as a researcher. And uh, one of the problem, uh, one of the story I would like to share with everyone is how we recruit users. So uh, for VR, we try to target, uh, we target uh, enterprise user, 
But I think, uh, yeah, uh, uh, many of you, you should know that uh, a recruiting enterprise user is very difficult because that they are busy and then they uh, uh, sometimes they cannot really receive any gift card or incentive from our sites. So in this case, instead of just waiting for their response passively, we initiated a few activity to providing consulting service to help them to learn uh, tips and tricks to build a better videos. So each session that is a telling for uh, our enterprise needs based on the video project they are working on. So for example, right now they are working as a, a, a video for presenting uh, information more clear. So they will share the video with us and then we will give us a uh, review their uh, project and give us some feedbacks. So by providing this uh, consulting session service, actually it's really helping a lot for our user uh, our enterprise user to share their time uh, for us to the inter uh, interview. And also we can see the video they are working on and uh, discover some of the uh, issues. So I will say this is a very win-win situation for both sides. So yeah, from this story, uh, I feel like being more creative when you are uh, designing how to reward and benefit to our user interviewee. Is a very important uh, when you are trying to recruit your users. And for the consulting session, it's not really, uh, we offer a few different places uh, for them to choose, but our favorites always try to uh, host a consulting session at our client sites. So yeah, if we can travel to our clients, their office, then yeah, we can see a lot more things that we couldn't see before including, for example, some of the environment factor, including their internal connection, devices, their uh, work PA, and the uh, environment, etc. So in this uh, slide, yeah, this is the uh, one picture was taken by one of the on-site visiting. So we were surprised to see that how our user breaking uh, VR limits by integrating VR uh, along with the other uh, Adobe Suite tool, and also, uh, yeah, how to display uh, along with the studio. So it's a very impressive uh, experience. So always great to having some chance to uh, having that uh, chance to uh, visit our uh, customer uh, office. And also I think, yeah, the loss is, uh, yeah, I would like to share the tool we use often to recruit the user and conduct the testing quickly. The tool is called, yeah, usertesting.com. So during the COVID uh, pandemic, it's become very difficult to travel and sometimes it's uh, uh, we have uh, some uh, time difference issue. So yeah, so our team, we use a user testing to run the user interview, user testing, and uh, for, uh, even like a, a design preference testing. So it's quite efficient. And your t if your uh, company also experienced the same issue, uh, yeah, about you cannot really, yeah, having uh, enough time or having uh, a chance to travel. Cool. Then we are moving to the last part about the storytelling. So yeah, we spend a lot of the time uh, as a researcher to plan, interview, and do the testing. So definitely we would like to, our uh, insight to be more uh, impactful and even be more uh, memorizable for our audience. So in this part, I will tell you how can we share our insights in our organization. So the first, yeah, design discussion. So sometimes uh, that we notice that if we just are having a pure uh, research sharing only, some people feel like it's too official and uh, audience feel a bit of the uh, stress to share their idea and their thoughts. So which cause a uh, less interaction during the presentation. So yeah, so our team, we want to make the sharing to be less official. And then we want to share this to be yeah more casual and more frequently. So we prepare the uh we make the uh, research insights and join the uh design discussion together. So yeah, which can uh boost not only about uh yeah I think uh sharing lots of insight uh for the design discussion, which can help the designer to boost the idea uh by considering and uh, referencing a uh, user pain point but also for the research team side, we can have a better idea or even get more uh, inspiration about uh, what is our next project that we can uh, working on. 
Yeah, and second, as I mentioned, casual. So we also found that the show, uh, showing evidence directly to audience could be very convincing. So that's uh, we try to just uh, uh, putting uh, some of the user script, uh, video, and highlighting quotes. So which can help our uh, audience can even be more immersed to the uh, themselves into the user scenario. So in this uh, in this aside, so you can see that I present the user script at the left hand side. And uh, right hand side, uh, 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 just a, a video with uh, some quotes. So yeah, I feel like uh, by using these uh, 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 tips and uh, by using this uh, tip, yeah, it's kind of a uh, too uh, not too official. It's a bit casual, but also at the same time, it's very convincing to the other people to remember user insights. However, yeah, sometimes uh, it's hard to uh, always having a video or having the picture to present the user pain points. And especially sometimes when we travel to our uh, client's office, they, uh, we are not allowed to take uh, any photo or videos over there. So in this case, uh, how can we better to visualize the message and uh, immerse our audience to use the scenario? Yeah, so our solution is using uh, our own tool, Beyond, to visualize the story happen when there is no video available. So yeah, I'm gonna quickly uh, show you how we do that. So this is uh, one of the uh, example. So this is the story happened during the site visiting. So uh, as I mentioned earlier, so sometimes we travel to our uh, client office. So to teach them how to uh, better to use a VM. So at the time that when we arrive uh, to the lecture room, and then when we are about to log in uh, to the public computer, and then the reason why uh, we use a public computer is because that our personal device uh, were locked at their reception because of security issue. So we are not allowed to use our own computer. We can only use a public uh, computer. So when we are uh, going to type our username and password to login, so the, we, the system trigger the two-factor uh, authentication. So require you to uh, not only type in your email, but also asking you to log in your email and click the uh, typing the uh, uh, a link in order to proceed. However, all of our uh, device were locked on the uh, reception. So we are not allowed to, yeah, using the com uh, our own computer to open the our email box. So which make the, yeah, the uh, situation getting worse. So yeah, I think you guys might feel a bit confusing if I just try to explain by plain text. So we don't really want this kind of thing happen during our presentation. So how we solve this uh, issue? So yeah, we use our own tool. So this video, I'm gonna quickly uh, uh, teach you guys, how can we use uh, VM to visualize the uh, story? So at VM, yeah, so you can just uh, copy paste the text and the script and finding a few different keyword. And then at the left hand side, we have a lot of the sync library. So you can just uh, use the sync library to visualize the user uh, for example, like the environment and then the scenario. And so as I mentioned earlier, so we was in the uh, uh, lecture room, we were in the uh, reception, we are doing a login logout, uh, login issue. And so after adding lots of things, then we can tr even try to customize the character. So in this case that I'm putting myself in a video and then uh, also adding another lecture uh, in this uh, video. So once we add in those uh, uh, character in the video, actually we can make the uh, the presentation to be more attached to our audience because the people show in the video is the someone they are already familiar. And then, yeah, we try to customize the asset. So yeah, we mentioned that we are giving a lecture of the VR. So we can, uh, yeah, uh, uh, putting our own logo by using uh, uh, upload the UGC a file and also do some of the branding stuff by changing, uh, for example, like a color and then putting some of the screenshots. So yeah, so yeah, putting some of the key screen and also uh, try to change the color and then yeah, let's see how it looks in the end. So yeah, after that, we tried to uh, screen capture a few different view. So that's uh, we using the story ball. So to tell them that uh, yeah, our personal device will lock at the reception. So that's why we cannot use our personal device. And when we are arriving to the lecture room, we were very exciting to share. 
However, that when we are going to uh, present how Vion works, the, the view shows the two-factor authentication, and we have uh, no idea about how can we uh, yeah, log in to our personal email. So all the people were waiting, so we feel very pressured. So in the end, we have to call our uh, colleague to as a colleague to log in the uh, email, yeah, uh, from their own. So yeah, by using this uh, storyboard, it can be better uh, visualize the message. And what can be even better is uh, we can, yeah, in the end, I try to, uh, yeah, to expose as a video. So let me quickly uh, play the video to you. So you can see that how can we turn the plant text into more insightful story. Okay, so sorry, I, I only spent five minutes to make this video. So I, I haven't really had a chance to uh, to add in some of the voiceover into the story. But anyway, the, uh, the message I want to present to everyone is uh, when you have uh, no uh, 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 assets or media available, yeah, sometimes using some of the tool to message or uh, to visualize your message, which can help your uh, story to be more uh, convincing or to be more uh, engaging to your audience. Cool. So here are all of my sharing. So yeah, to sum up, so how to make a research, also research to be more agile. So the first, try to be, uh, uh, try to iterate and testing your uh, research so that you can, yeah, to get the insight quickly. And second, uh, empower. So we can delegate our research work and to focus on the high value projects. And third, be creative. So yeah, be, be creative. You can shorten your uh, research time and even have a better res uh, research results. And the last, uh, storytelling. So yeah, by using the uh, good storytelling way, we can bring the impact to our, our organization in an engaging way. Okay, so yeah, hope you guys enjoy my sharing and uh, hope my sharing also brings some of the inspiration when you guys doing uh, research. So thank you so much. And uh, the bottom part is my personal information. Yeah, happy to uh, receive if you have uh, any question. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dan. That, that was really, really insightful. I, I enjoyed that a lot because um, there was so much detail about how you, you work internally. And so, so one thing actually, and, and please, if anybody out there has any questions, please do just add them where, whichever platform you're using and I'll pass them to through to, to Dan. Um, I would love to get a little bit of insight into how your team is structured. So when you were saying all of that work that you do in Empower, are you a centralized kind of design team supporting multiple other teams or, or how does the structure work? Who, who's responsible for the Empower work and who are the users of that work? Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so our team that we have uh, a bit two different team. So one is a designer uh, design team, the other one is a research team. So as I mentioned earlier, as a researcher, we are more like a supporting role or a consultant role or bring knowledge to the people. So that's, yeah, if uh, people that have uh, any uh, question or uh, any concern, if they want to run the research by their own, they can consult uh, to our team. So for example, like uh, they can understand, for example, like uh, at the very beginning, uh, if they propose uh, some of the research uh, methodology, for example, like a user interview, so we can tell them like, uh, for example, you can uh, use uh, what kind of, uh, we can help them to draft the high level question and also help them to review the uh, the detail. So you can take a, a research team or like a consultant site uh, for them. And also that design team size is a lot bigger than research team. So that's why we, the only thing we can do is like this. And second part is that sometimes we also try to shift our focus based on our company uh, strategy. For example, like uh, this day, our team uh, focus on, on AI-related uh, research, sorry, AI research, uh, AI-related project or growth-related project. So in this case, then we have to assign the uh, researcher to this team, to, uh, so uh, full-time uh, people to work together. 
So in this case, uh, researcher, they are not consultant anymore. They are not part-time uh, people anymore. They are full-time. So in this case, they, these are researcher will taking care of the project case, research projects. Brilliant. Mm -mm. So um, we are very flexible. Yeah. It, it, the other thing that just jumps out to me is particularly in the Empower, so you've got the community, the playbooks, the templates, the services, the knowledge sharing. There's a lot of work there. So do you have anything, like if somebody was listening to this and going, wow, it's very scary to try and replicate all of that. Is there any kind of um, guides or anything that people could use as a starting point on the internet that you could share? Mm -mm. Yeah, I have to be honest. Actually, some of the idea were from UXDS. So I remember, yeah, you guys are also sharing some of the researchers. That's how they prepare those uh, template. I I remember even like uh, they prepare, uh, for example, like uh, how to, uh, the email to invite people to join a uh, uh, interview. So actually, I also try to uh, research a lot on the internet about yeah how to uh, how to write the those kind of information. But for our team, my role is more like uh, to do some benchmark and then finding the best practice. However, that I feel like it's still very important to uh, internalize lots of research, uh, research resources. So I work closely with, uh, for example, like our uh, operation team and even HR team and even our copywriter try to, for example, like uh, how to make lots of message to be more beyond feeling and to be more like, uh, for example, like uh, based on the project goal. So what all I say will be like uh, the first, yeah, try to find the uh, information and resources and USDS is a great uh, place that I always try to find. And second is to find a play, uh, the colleague who are also interested in this uh, topic and then you share those uh, content with them and then they also try to inter internalize those content and customize for your own audience. So, but I will say that I also spent uh, some time to prepare these uh, resources but I will make sure that every uh, research project ends, I have uh, something to carry to the next project. So I think, yeah, for the people, if you guys work in more and more projects, you're gonna have a lot more knowledge later. Brilliant. All right, well, thanks a million for, for sharing. And um, that I hope everybody out there enjoyed it as much as I did. So uh, once again, thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thank you.